Hey guys, it's Fire Force Doggo again, and there's nothing you can do about it. Today I'm going to be talking about the HK G3 rifle in 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. The rifle is uh, an H3 VR with only a one variant right now. It's just a full stock G3 A3 with the older uh, SEF instead of the pictogram selector, and the only uh, furniture for it right now is the OD, so-called tropical furniture. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole ton of goodies for this other than uh, a drum mag, a suppressor, and the standard H&K rail adapter that the MP5, etc. also uses. For me, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, I like the old school look and the austere German aesthetic, as it were. That this this gun evokes, and uh, the other great thing is you can do the HK slap on the charging handle. Uh, I'm not going to go into the full Wikipedia treatment since you can just go to Wikipedia for that. But I do want to talk a little bit of history about this gun. It grew out of the same post war II need for a fast firing infantry weapon that the FAL did, and apparently just like the FAL, as you're going to see here in a second, they, they both both developers felt like they needed to have that new generation of rifles still be about battleship length, like the old Mauser 98K and the Mosin the Gun M91 and similar rifles like that. Um, the G3 is a pretty long rifle, um, but it, it kind of maneuvers just as well in H3 VR as the, the FAL does, which I've already spoken about. But getting back to the history, um, originally this gun actually started as kind of a spiritual successor to the Sturmgewehr 45, which was a, a German advancement of the Sturmgewehr 44, which a lot of people are probably familiar with either from other video games or, or you know, firearms knowledge. And there was uh, also a French rifle, the, the name of it's escaping me right now, but that also kind of inspired the later Spanish Set Me rifle that was created by Ludwig Vorgrimler who was a German engineer and apparently also a citizen of the Imperium responsible for inventing the power racks. With a name like that, uh, I'm not sure what other conclusion you could draw. Now, this may seem odd that anyone would let a German anywhere near anything more advanced than a slingshot, given recent events at the time in Europe, but it does make sense as Hitler had given support to Franco during the Spanish Civil War and the two countries had some ties as a result. Plus, NATO needing Spain, and the fact that pretty much every other country had taken home a, a goodie bag of German scientists at the end of the war, everyone kind of just let it go. Um, so after the SETME was developed, the Bundesgrenschutz, or BGS, the German border guards, and Germany's first post-war armed force rejected the set me in favor of the FAL after evaluating both of them. However, the Bundeswehr, the reformed German army, originally was going to follow suit with the FAL, although there was some, some interest in the set me as well. But the, the kicker was, after some bickering with the Belgians over not allowing a license made FAL to be made in Germany, the Bundeswehr held trials for a newest service rifle in, in 58, and this is actually where G3 derives its name from. Originally, the trials were for the FAL, which was designated the G1 in German service. There was the Swiss SIG 510, which was the G2. G3 was, amazingly, the G3, and the American AR-10 was the G4. Trials were held, and eventually the G3 won out, obviously. Um, other basic information about it was 
used a unique roller locking system that I'm too dumb to understand, so I'm not really going to go into it, but I, I know that it was used on a bunch of other H&K pistols, rifles, and uh, uh, a machine gun or two, I think. It also, another interesting basic feature of it was it used a chamber that allegedly bent the casing in ejection, um, so it was a very distinctive uh, casing that you could tell had been fired by a G3. Some sources say that was actually on purpose, it was allegedly to prevent reloading by enemy forces. This conceivably being for a time when the Germans were going to try for a best out of three in world wars and they were expecting to go up against other countries using the NATO round. Um, the G3 obviously went on to not only be the standard German rifle until the introduction of the G36 but also despite Germany's kind of pacifist stance politically, went on to a lot of great export success as well. The rifles used close to home in places like Norway and Sweden, but really it, it saw a lot of use globally. It uh, was used in Africa, in Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau by Portuguese counterinsurgency forces during the uh, colonial wars in those countries when they were fighting Portuguese rule. It was used by the Shah of Iran as the weapon of choice for the army, as well as uh, naval commandos, and it saw use in the Iran-Iraq war and later even the Iraqi insurgency against U.S. forces with captured or, or donated Iranian G3s. On the other end of the spectrum, too, there was the Contras in Nicaragua, that actually used it, kind of completing that Iran-Contra connection there in uh, Africa. While the FAL was um, primarily associated with Rhodesian security forces, the security force auxiliaries and the horse-mounted Grey Scouts actually used the G3. Uh, from what I understand, the FAL was considered more accurate by Rhodesian troops, but they saw the G3 as more rugged, so it, it kind of depended on, on what you needed out of the particular weapon. And obviously, the G3, um, they could get parts and, and uh, complete rifles, I assume, from the Portuguese up until 74 when the uh, Portuguese pulled out, so they at least had a supply of the G3s as well. As I said, it was used globally, so South America and Asia, but of particular interest, something I read was during the El Salvador Civil War, apparently a lot of, I assume just the government troops, but maybe uh, rebels as well, were generally pretty small in stature and young, so that had caused some problems with a rather long G3, and the uh, charging handle, which was much farther for the forward on the weapon compared to something like the FAL. They, uh, troops that had the G3 in El Salvador apparently would either uh, break off or, or remove the little plastic handle on the cocking handle, and then they would hook the sling point through the metal tab that was attached to that charging handle uh, as opposed to the sling swivel since they couldn't reach the charging handle on their own that adaptation would actually allow them to stand on the butt end of the sling and then pull back on the other end of it and thus the charging handle to quote kickstart it uh, they also apparently modified some magazines by welding two two of them together to create uh, I assume like a 35 or 40 rounder compared to the, the single 20 rounder. It still carries on today in a number of smaller third world countries and it's actually still seeing use in conflicts like the Voskai insurgency in northern Rochambodia and other places. Um, in H3VR 
I, I really like this gun. There's a big round, it's got good open sights, and it's really a breeze to kind of fire, despite the fact that it doesn't have a lot of fancy add-ons. As you can see in the video, uh, you can put a scope on it, or a red dot, or both, and they have their uses, but at the ranges you're generally firing in H3 VR, y you don't even really need that. Um, especially considering some of the problems you can see that I have using the scope at some of the ranges that I'm, 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 I'm shooting at. Um, it's, like I said, it's it's as maneuverable as the foul, if not maybe a little bit more. Only downsides, I would say, are really, it kind of has a finicky magwell. That's not necessarily unrealistic because the magazine in the real G3 needs to be kind of rocked in, similar to an AK, as opposed to the FAL where you just slap it in straight. Also, I've noticed from using this rifle that the charging handle placement also makes it very easy to accidentally grip the charging handle instead of the foreguard uh, in-game. Obviously, though, that's, that's just a technical limitation of a very realistic video game, and it's not really any fault of rust in implementation or even the, the real firearm. Um, it's just one of those idiosyncrasies that there's not really a, a good answer for if you, you want to have a realistic representation of the firearm and reloading and, and all that stuff. So uh, I really like this gun. I would say between the FAL and the G3, it's really just a matter of preference. I, I like them both. If you kind of want a more tactical look, the FAL's probably better because it's got that wrist rail version. And if you want the sort of meat and potatoes basic assault rifle without any of the temptation to put extra stuff on it, the G3 is a good, good choice. But other than that, I mean, they're both large caliber rifles and they perform very similarly uh, despite some some individual aspects to them that, are, that make them slightly different other than just looks. But I, like I said, I really like them both. They're both well represented in the game and both guns are, are a lot of fun to shoot and if you're worried about the competitive aspect of it, like I said, that, that big round really makes a difference compared to some of the SMGs where you might have to pump a couple of rounds into a target before it uh, explodes into some meaty goodness. But for target shooting, I mean, that doesn't really matter. Um, or ISPC where a, a hit's a hit, whether it's from a, a 22 or a 50 cal. Um, but that's, that's kind of my thoughts on the gun and a uh, basic history of it. Hopefully f you found this interesting, and uh, if you did find it interesting, obviously hit the like and subscribe button, smash them even, and don't forget to contribute to my Patreon, because just because I'm happy to, to get great content for free doesn't mean you should be. Um, and I will talk to you guys next time.